You know, um, one, of the, one of the things that I really want that's been, that's been pressed upon my heart, and I've been on this series now, this is part four of this series, is about hearing the shepherd's voice. More than ever, we need to be, we need to have, be able to hear what God is saying to us. Amen? We need to be, in, we need to be very in touch with what the Spirit of God is saying because that's how God protects us. God can give you a warning from, the, from your inward witness. And one of the things as we continue to grow in understanding how God speaks is that God's going to speak more to you inside here, not outside. Amen? We pay too much attention to what's going on around us. Number one, that can discourage you. Amen? But I believe right now God is speaking to us all. And he's speaking. You'll find out when you learn how to get past all of the noise. When you get rid of all the noise that's in your life. I, I, remember, I remember one thing as I, 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 played, I played defensive back on, in football field. And one thing that would happen sometimes is once you got all the guys in front making all the noise, you could see everything just open up. And then sometimes the game would sort of slow down to a certain extent so you can go do whatever you need to do. Or even if you're on a basketball court, sometimes you're moving, everybody else is moving in slow motion, but you're moving fast. Those are those days when you, you can't miss a shot. You know what I'm saying? Right, Matt? See, Jason never seen a bad, Jay never seen a bad shot, you know. But for real, sometimes you're just feeling it. But, when, but that's when you get quiet because you've hit a spot inside yourself where everything slows down and you're not paying any attention to anything else around you. But, but you, you have a vision that you can see clearly. God wants you to see clearly right now. And, and, and one of the things that we have to understand moving forward, and even from the pulpit, I believe that it's time for our pastors to rise up and start talking about some real-life issues. Amen. Now, I'll tell you right now, I might, I might say something political. But remember, I'm black. I can say whatever I want to say. But there's things that we need to be praying about. Now, and as a shepherd, I need, to, I need to give you some time to focus. We do not want to be mail-in vote nothing. You don't want that. I'll tell you what you do. Get your behind up, go a week early, and vote. I just went away. I, I, we, we were just at a conference, and I had to stand in line in the morning to get a, at the Starbucks. If I can stand in line at the Starbucks, if you can, if, if any, anybody ever been to a Cane's lately, all they selling is greasy chicken fingers and some french fries, and folks will sit in line in a, in a drive through for an hour and a half to get them. If you can sit in line for an hour and a half, to get you some chicken fingers, you can stand in line and vote. Amen? All oh, that's for free. My name is Brian Coleman, and I support that message. <laughs> the, other, the other piece that I really want you to focus on is this, is knowing the day and the hour that we're living in. If you're not born again in this place right now, you... You need to get some Jesus in you. Amen. I'm not kidding. It's the day and the hour that we're in. You need to take this with every bit of severity that you've ever had in your life. This is the time and hour where we, and people sit there start to say, well, Pastor, are you saying that we're in, a, we're in the lastest of the last days that you'd ever see? Because for some reason, and I know my wife was in, my wife was in, was was asleep, and I went in the bathroom, and then next thing I know, I'm listening to a shofar praying in the Holy Ghost. Don't have time to go through what a shofar is for y'all, but y'all can look it up. Jesus is calling. The clock is ticking. It is not time to play around. It is not time to be messing around. It's time that you need to be prepared. Amen? His voice is very loud and clear 
in this, in this area. Because we stated here before that, the, that he's the good shepherd. So the good shepherd leads, he feeds, and he protects. And right now, he wants to lead us back to him. And we all know where we are. So we need to make sure that we check ourselves while you're spending all your time worrying about whether you should put a mask on your face or not. Oh, I know I've got y'all now. But I tell you what, the mask don't cover up sin. Only the blood of Jesus does. So let's just focus on, let's just focus on that piece and let's make sure we got that piece right. Because I, I'm telling you right now, we are in a very serious time right now with, with, in regards to the things of faith. He's a good shepherd. And he says this, let me have, um, let me have John 10, verse 27. We'll just go right to that verse. John 10, verse 27. I know I skipped about three or four other ones already. John 10, verse 27. He says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, they follow me. But have you ever been a parent and the child didn't listen to you? Have you ever had a pet? For those of you who don't have kids, have you ever had a pet and you told the pet to do something and it didn't obey? Well, that's how God feels sometimes. I believe about us. Like I said, Jesus is on the cross like this. But in today, he's like this. <laughs> What's going on with people? You, you, you really that, like I would say, like we would say, you don't know what time it is? We need, to, we need to be mindful of the time and of the hour. And let me have Malachi 3, verse 13. Malachi 3, verse 13. Because God's serious, and he's speaking to us. And a lot of us will always say, God, I want to hear your voice. I want to hear your voice. I want to hear your voice. But he's talking to you all the time. You need to make sure that you dial in on the right, on the right station. Amen? We need to make sure that we tune things in right now. Like I said last week, there's an issue because everything's digital now. But you guys remember the, the good old rabbit ear times that we used to have? Or you had a radio that you had to really tune in the, tune in the dial to make sure you get the right station? There wasn't a button when I grew up. You were turning that knob. And if the, and if the antenna wasn't right, you were putting foil on that antenna too. Amen? All right. He said, your words have been harsh against me, says the Lord. Yet, yet you say, what have we spoken against you? He's, God's saying, your words have been harsh against me. When you don't believe what he's telling you, we don't, when we don't respect the word of God, I remember growing up, there'd be times when my parents are from Alabama, and there was respect. And it wasn't earned. It, it, it respect was not optional. And some of the time that you ever got, ever, ever, you ever got that look or ever got it was because something flew out your mouth the wrong way. Classics like this one. I'm downstairs, and my mom would say, Brian. And I'd go, what? That slipper could be a boomerang. <laughs> it, it, it could go down the stairs, hook, smack you upside the head, and come back up. <laughs> See, we don't understand because today's culture never understands consequence. When I grew up, there was no one, two, three. It might have been point one. Back. <laughs> so because of that, we don't understand. God is love, and my parents love me. Now, I never got one I didn't deserve. Never. Never got one I didn't deserve. 
But I'm here to, un- but I want to let you know that God is a righteous judge. And I'm not saying, I don't know why I'm going down this road, but I want everybody to really understand that this is not the time to be playing around with God. This is not the time. He's talking to us. He wants us to make sure things are right in our lives. We want the blessing of God, but he wants to make sure that our lives are lining up the way he wants, the way we're walking with him. Can I get an amen? Amen. Now, the, why it's important that you want to make sure that you listen to God, because if you're listening to God, you're not going to miss it. How many of you ever missed it? Have you, have you ever understood that if you ever bought the wrong car, it took you 30 minutes to fill out the paperwork, but five years to pay off the note? If you ever married the wrong person, I'm not going to go with that one. <laughs> but, th- but think about it. We need to, we, like my, my daughter would tell me, Dad, if that's the one, I'd be like, that, that, ain't, that, that ain't the one. Or, well, is that, I don't want to hear it. Tell me, I'll tell you right now. You, do you want me to get, that ain't the right one. <laughs> my mama told me, and my mother batted 100%. She'd be like, something wrong with that girl. Because she was feeling that something on the inside. There's a scratching in my mama's spirit. Remember, when, when the sun came through the, through the room on July the 26th, 1964, <laughs> and, the light, and the sunlight glistened on that hospital room in University Hospital in Columbus, Ohio, Well, because of the connection that the mother has with the son now, that's also spiritual. And my mother was a praying mother, and a praying mother's always wanting to hear something, and sometimes she's hearing something that baby boy is not seeing. And she's going to, and she's going, but mama's out there, you got to tell them now. Don't worry about if they get mad at you or not. Don't worry about your own past mistakes either. I'm going to set you free from that. There comes a time you need to look at your child and say, look here, I'm feeling something inside here. I always ask people, people ask me, say, well, what should I do about this, Brian? What are you feeling in here? Not here. Not here. Not here. Because you remember the requirements of someone to date date your daughter when they was in high school? Oh, what? Does he play sports? Oh, that's good. Does he get good grades? Good. He can date my daughter. Well, let me see. I would classify as one of those people, and I was full of devils. Huh? If if that's your only requirement, if your only requirement is that he have a good job, or if that she's working, you better be led by the Spirit of God. Amen? And so... This is an area that has to be taught to the body of Christ so we know where to go. If you're looking at buying a piece of property, you need to know where to buy it. If you're looking at buying a vehicle, you need to be led by the Spirit of God. If you're looking at your everyday life, you need to be led by God's Spirit. How many of you drive on the highway every day? How many of you see somebody texting driving at 70 miles an hour? You need Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. You all right? So you never miss it following God. God God wants you to hit the bullseye in your life. I tell anybody this. I turned 56 years old a couple of weeks ago. I don't have time to miss it. The clock's ticking. I don't have any more time to miss anything. So I want to make sure that I'm dialed in to what the Spirit of God is saying to me. Let me have um, let let me have John 16, verse 13. John 16, verse 13. And when God speaks, I'm going to listen. Hallelujah. He said, however, when this remember Jesus said beforehand, before that in verse. In, in, in chapter 14, he said he's not going to leave you comfortless, that he's going to send the Holy Spirit. Amen? We said, however, when the Spirit of truth comes, 
when he, the spirit, of, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. He will speak to you, and he will tell you things to come. So you know what that means? You do not need Miss Cleo. You do not need a palm reader. You do not, you do not need to call some of your unbelieving friends and act, ask them for, for advice sometimes. Amen? Amen? Because sometimes, cause sometimes God will tell you something and you get behind it, get around other believers, and they'll talk you out of your blessing. Amen? Oh, you know what I'm feeling? This is me right around 2000 and 2001. Oh, yeah, I'm really feeling like quitting my job and moving to Broken Hill, Oklahoma, and make minimum wage to go to Bible school. How many Christians do you think would say, Brian, that's a really good idea? I'm all for that 65% pay cut. Yeah, do it, baby. When stuff like that comes, I'm not talking to everybody about that. I'm zipping my mouth, and I'm feeling it inside here. Because I don't want you to say, well, what you going to do with your kids? Yeah, I had grown. How old were the kids? Brooke was in what, the 10th grade or something, Ninth grade, 10th grade? She, she had braces. Taylor didn't have hers yet. So I got to find an orthodontist with no medical benefits? I'm just going to turn my back on y'all right now. <laughs> because, because, hey man, because see, a lot of you, if externally it'd be like, that's a bad time. No job. Got to go down there and find one. Huh? Before we left, Angie's father, before we left in July, my father passed. And in August, her dad was diagnosed with leukemia. So when I stand before you here, the guy that's preaching this gospel to you, I'd have been there, done that, got the T-shirt, and got the luggage too. Because when God speaks to you, sometimes it's not at the most advantageous time in your life to do something for him. Can I get an amen? amen. But we listened. But we listened. Because I listened to what the Spirit of God said to me when I met that little thing back there. <laughs> Angie Coleman in 1987. Where did you come from, baby? No. When I met her, I felt a witness on the inside. And it had to be from a praying mama. Because, trust me, I had all kinds of demons running around in my life. But something hit me that that's the right person for me because you have to have a specific person to be with you to go through what's required for me to be in ministry. Amen. So I have to be led by the Spirit of God to find the right person that can be my proper helpmate during this time too as well. Amen? Amen. So the Holy Spirit will give you a glimpse. How many of you ever had a glimpse of what your life's looking like further down the road? Or have somebody speak something to you that hits your amen about what it looks like. Amen. So when that happens, the Spirit of God, if that hits your amen, the Spirit of God is talking to you about that. But don't chase after it. Chase after God. Get closer to God and he'll make that, he'll make that situation so much more clearer to you. Because see, Romans 8, chapter 4, verse 14 says, As many are led by are the sons of God, led by the Spirit of God, are the sons and the daughters of God. You are sons, and everybody in here say, if you ain't, we'll fix that right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't walk out here not knowing Jesus. That's a unique altar call, isn't it? <laughs> hey, but, but you know what? All, all the times of head down, eyes closed, all this stuff, I ain't got, we don't have time for that. Amen. The trumpet's blowing, Jack. We don't have time for that anymore. We don't have time to beg somebody to live right for Jesus. The time is to get yourself right now. Amen? All right. Hallelujah. So we have to make, we make a choice to be led by our flesh or be led by the Spirit. We make that choice every day. Every day you make it. 
And I'm going to be led by the Spirit because the Spirit of God doesn't miss it. Let me have Romans chapter 8, verse 5. Now we'll stop. We'll get going here. Don't worry. I'll make you guys feel good when you walk out the door. Hey, heaven's worth it. When the, when the trumpet sounds, I'm going out on the first low. Y'all can stay down here and percolate and tribulate and everything else. I'm out of here. Your boy going to be like, I would do one of them, them Jordans up in the sky. <laughs> I'll jump and ain't going to come down. Y'all be like, size nine. <laughs> I'm out of here. I'm not hanging around down here. <laughs> For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. So you have a choice on what you want to set your mind on. You have a choice of what you want to set your mind on. I, I'm going to set my mind on the things of God. Amen? Let me have, let me have, because um, your mind plays a part. Whatever you think about, that's where you end up going. One thing I found out, when I was on vacation sitting around the airport, waiting on the plane, there's a big old big white big screen right in front of me, and it had CNN on it. Help me, Jesus. I was like, if somebody can sit there and watch that stuff all day long, I'm like, what country are they living in? I see why everybody walk running around here triple mask and wearing visors and everything else. If that's the only news that's going on in this country, glory to God. I'm like, man, I was like, man, put the food network on that thing or something. <laughs> glory to God. It, it, but they understand that it, whatever you focus your mind on, and here at FTC, we talked about mind renewal. Philippians 4, verse 6 through 8 will tell you what to think about. If it's things that's making you angry, if you decide to scroll through your Facebook and every other post is about a mask, quit reading them. This, here's some more scientific information that a mask don't work. Well, I'm quite sure it, don't take, it, it doesn't take rocket science. I farted it and you smelled it through the mask. I used to do drywall finishing. And when you're sanding a house down with a construction mask on, and you take the mask off your face, and I still got white stuff on, I'm quite sure that a virus is, is smaller than drywall dust. So I'm not going to waste all my time arguing with somebody about that. Because it's, it's going to distract you because who wants to cause a distraction? You're going to find that out later on here. <laughs> Can I preach to you today? Next verse. Verse 6, please. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You want to be led by the Spirit of God? It should, you should feel life, you should be quickened on the inside, and you should have peace about it. If you feel uneasy about something, it's your flesh. God, I want, you, I want to make sure that I'm doing the right thing here. You should have peace on the inside. Amen? I remember, I remember last year I had cancer, and, the, and they asked me the question, we got our doctor here. We got a list of our doctors who can do the surgery for you. And we have this guy over here in Columbus who does a whole lot of them. Which one do you want? There's no doubt where I'm going. And the, and the doctor that did the surgery was a believer. So when your doctor sits in front of you and he says, praise God. Glory to God. If that's what comes out of his mouth, you pick the right doctor. Because your prayers, 
that you've been praying for speedy recovery, the prayers that my wife were praying for for speedy recovery, the, the, the doctor that was doing the surgery was praying the same thing. And it hits amen, and the job gets done. Amen? Glory to God. We have to be led by the Spirit of God. Should I send my kid to school? I shouldn't send my kid to school. What are you going to do? Well, what are you going to do? Well, what are you going to do? What are you going to do, unbeliever? What are you going to do, unbeliever? What are you going to believe? What are you going to do, carnal person? What, come on, what are you, what are you going to do? Well, what's leading you? Well, I seen something on TV the other day that said this. Well, I seen something. Da, 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 da. Well, I read Psalms 91. And I'm going to pray that over my family. Amen? If I can pray Psalm 91 over six restaurants and all of its employees, you can pray it over the three kids you got in your house. When we get to start to understand the power that's in the gospel and the authority that we have as believers, then we can walk in victory over all this stuff. Amen? Let's keep going here. So, to be spiritually minded is life and it's peace. But we have to understand that I want to be led by the Spirit. I don't want to get all into all the mental stuff. Amen? So, Brother Hager would always say this. We want Christians, as a Christian, we should be more life inside-minded. We should be feeling, live life inside here, not based on what we see. Let me get you, thank you, Holy Ghost. If there is a flood down south, and the rash of flooded cars was coming up from the south to the car dealership, and they brand new. They look good on the outside. Good deal. But I don't know how, why that car is so cheap. Oh, my goodness. And look at it. It's a 2020 with 3,000 miles on it, and they want to sell it for the same price as a 2017. Oh, I know. That's got to be the right one. And you go drive it, and all of a sudden you start feeling this. And then you call, though, this is what we do. This is why I want to stop. I want to help you. Um, amen. I want to let you save yourself some time. Let me call up my buddy on the car lot. Let me call my car, my car dealer buddy. Amen. They got, a, they got a 2020 car here, man. It's for the same price as 2017. He'll be like, oh, dude, you should go ahead and get that. But you still feeling that? Anybody know something like that's ever happened? Amen. We got to understand this stuff. God wants to save us. God, want, God wants you to be in his will. God's got a real good plan. But you know who gets in the way? We do. We do. We do a real good job of getting in the way. Be like, hey. <laughs> Be trying to walk it in. <laughs> but there's times when you feel that quickening and you feel that peace on the inside and say, yeah, that's where you need to be. That's the one. That's the job. If you're ever selecting people or hiring people, that's the person that needs the job. And, and every time you did something, you picked the wrong person, next thing you know, when they start cutting up, you know good and well. You'd be like, you know what, man? I knew it wasn't going to work out in the first place. Anybody ever been that before? Okay, good. So we have to make sure that we're focused on the Word of God. And I remember, and I remember this scripture, Isaiah 26, verse 3. Isaiah 26, verse 3. Because when you're a busy person, the most important thing you need to do is rest. And if anxiety has got you being sleepless, you need to be led by the Spirit of God. 
Remember this one. If you're having problems sleeping at night, this is for you. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts God. When your mind is focused on the things of God, he'll keep you in peace. He'll keep you in peace. There's somebody else trying to bring confusion into your life. And we have to make the decision whether, we, whether or not we want to let that person in. We, we, or, to, or let that situation into our life. Amen? Because, see, God has the perfect plan for you. Let me have Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts, remember, your mind, what you think about. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Leave that right there. There are times when this verse also says, I have a plan for you. But remember, where does a plan come from? Thoughts of what? What's the scripture say? Thoughts of what? Peace. Thoughts of peace. God's not going to have you do something that makes you get all anxious and crazy. When you trust him, you'll be like, I know that's God. The times in my life when I had to do something that didn't make any sense, like, you know what, Brian, you got $150 in a boom box. Start a church. I got $150 in a boom box. Start a church. You have 10 people buy a church. But when you feel something on the inside, it's like, that's God. Because, see, I understand that God, to see, the God that I trust is the same God that Moses, the Red Sea's right here, Pharaoh's army is behind him, and all he's got is a stick. See, amen? See, the thing is, we, we, there's, there's enough stories about faith that we can live on, but we never... Talk about those things and move forward in those. Amen. Has anybody ever picked up a, a coat they hadn't wore for a while and stuck their hand in it and found money? And it was just at the right time when you needed it. God does all kinds of stuff that doesn't make sense. Things that happen right at the proper time when you was, when you was needing that to give you that peace. Amen? But that's the Spirit of God telling us. So, so God, told, God told Moses, what are you doing? Hey, stretch your staff out. That's the God we serve? It's a stick, folks. Amen? But once we dial into his power and have faith in him, let him do let, let, let him do it. But he has to do it through you. Amen. Y'all okay? $150 in a boom box. The boom box back in my office there, office there right now. See, God wants to, the enemy wants to lead you away from God. He wants to lead you through worry, fear, and impatience. Turn your TV on right now. It's all about worry. It's all about fear. It's all about impatience. Right? Well, when's this going to happen? When's this going to happen? When are they going to play football? When are they going to do this? When are we going to send kids back to school? How are we going to vote? Everything. It's confusion all over the place. But as believers, we need, to, we need to discern the hour that we're in. And I got news for you. The guy with the bad haircut, he's your gatekeeper right now. Because if you really think as a believer, and you can tell this to all your friends that are, that are the, the carnal Christian friends of yours. 
if you really think the other guy's going to help this situation that wants to kill babies and heal the land? You honestly think that the millions upon millions upon millions of the, uh, 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 spilled blood in this nation with the unborn that we're going to heal this land? You better wake up. You better wake up. And again, just like I said, Christians, and I said Christians, when they're having a party, you're not even invited to it. Hear me now. They want nothing to do with you. So you can't, you can't get your dance on. They're not even inviting you to the party. They're not inviting you to the party. And we're afraid to talk about this in the body of Christ. Are you kidding me? Because the gloves need to come off right now. It's time for us to wake up and start to understand. Oh, man, you, 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 you're, you're, you're a Negro. You should be for Black Lives Matter. I'm not for, I, I want nothing to do with that group. Does my life matter? Oh, you better believe it. That's why Jesus died for me. But I'm for family. I'm for faith. Amen? We got to understand this stuff. We're living in a day and age where you better wake up and start to understand. Turn the light on and let the Spirit of God lead you and start to say, hey, you know what? There is nobody perfect. But right now, there's somebody that, that's doing more for what we believe in. And is your religious freedom important to you? If it is, there's only one option you have. Do you want to be able to worship freely? Then there's one option you have. I don't care. Well, he's nasty. Well, you know what? I can be nasty too sometimes. Any of y'all can be nasty. So get over yourself. Yeah, I got that on video too. I'm not watching him no more. That's all right. Jesus said some stuff in the Bible. Some of his, some of his guys left him too. They did. He started talking about drinking his blood and, then, and everything else. They're like, what? I got, I'm out of here. Take me, off, take me off your list, Jesus. But, but see, understand this. When preachers will wake up and start to understand that you guys are not their source, that how many people are in the seat is not the source, I'm going to stay hooked up to the source. Amen? Y'all all right? Because, see, the enemy tries to lead through worry, through fear, through impatience. You know, I got a scripture that will help you with that. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 33. And when I seen this scripture, I was like, you know what, man? This thing's got this present day all over it. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. Who then, if God's not the author of confusion, who is? Satan, Satan is. So who do you think is writing the, writing the COVID playbook? People so messed up right now, they don't know what to think. Remember now, a couple of months ago, 80 degrees. 80 degrees would kill the virus. Remember that? 80 degrees. It's 95 outside. <laughs> Remember, oh, if it's the, it, it, it doesn't do something if it's airborne and all this, all this other stuff, man. People are so confused. That's why I just stay in the truth. Read Psalms 91 every day and plead the blood of Christ over yourself and go about your business. You can't, you, can't, you can't have yourself bound up. You have to stay in the truth because they keep on moving the bar all the time. Uh, Brian, are you saying that COVID is real? But it ain't touching me. It's not touching me. I, don't have, I have not put all of my energy into studying all this stuff because the material is probably wrong anyway. 
So why waste your, so why waste your time on it? I'd rather get closer to God and understand what's going on right there. I'd rather have peace in knowing that, that he's my protector. I'd rather, I'd, rather go on, I'd rather go on Facebook, not my Facebook, I'd rather go on YouTube, FTC Urbana, click on the FTC thing, go to playlists, and, and, and listen to God is my protector. You've got enough sermons there to help you get through your COVID scares. Amen? That's for free. Watch being led by pressure. Watch being led by pressure. If you're being led by pressure, you're not being led by the Spirit. Because Satan always wants to put pressure on you. And, be, and because of the pressure that he wants to put on you to force you to make a decision, there's a syndrome that's going all across America that's messing up people's lives. Could I have my first MTF slide? And that's the syndrome, MTF. MTF is messing up people's lives. It's messed up a whole lot of people's lives. And it can be contagious because it can be passed down from generation to generation. It even affects really young people too. MTF. Man, we really need the cure for MTF. If I didn't have MTF in some occasions in my life and been led by the Spirit, I would have stopped a whole, it would have stopped a whole lot of things. So you're probably thinking about, well, bro, Pastor, what does MTF stand for? Moving too fast. Sometimes we just move too fast. We can't sit still. An opportunity comes our way that sounds good. We just drop everything else we do and don't don't search God on it. Somebody tell us something that sounds like a good idea, and we're jumping right on board without even thinking about it. The deal of a lifetime comes so fast to you, you're ready to make the move real fast. And I was thinking about Angie, remember when, when Pastor Hagen, during, during an ordination service, laid hands, he laid hands on me and Angie. And he, and, and he said he spoke a word, and the one thing I remember is this. He looked at me and said, don't move too fast. He looked at her and said, don't move too slow. So the answer is someplace in the middle. There's times when something looks like it makes sense to you, slow your roll. Slow down. Slow yourself down. Because MTF can put you into a whole lot of bad situations. MTF can make, you make, can make you take a wrong job, get in a relationship with the wrong person because you think, oh, the clock's ticking. I'm not getting any younger. Come on now. We, come on, the clock's ticking. Woo-wee. If I don't blah, 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 the clock's ticking. There's only so many single men in Champaign County. Well, like God can't ship you one from someplace else. God can't ship you. God can't all of a sudden you be someplace and the woman all of a sudden she's uh, she's over here, she's from Germany working over at what's that Rital for a week, and you just happen to be on your best soul day. And she see you, you be like, what's happening? <laughs> For real, people don't understand. You got to understand when God, get God involved, get God into your confession, get God into what you're speaking about, and let him bring it into your life. But if you keep on looking at things, remember, if you're the carnal Christian that's moved by what they see, amen? Amen. Shoot, Mark, Mark done had his gal flown in. <laughs> and she like, yeah, you better know it. <laughs> I, I'm 
for real. See, we limit God so much because of MTF. Because of MTF. Because we're trying to, we're, make, we're making decisions too fast. One thing, if it, if it looks good, that don't mean you jump in, you wait till what God speaks. And you be patient. Because if you move too fast, you start getting yourself into all kinds of other troubles. Okay, thank you, Holy Ghost. This is how MT, MTF really works, especially for all you guys. You're driving, and all of a sudden you're coming up on a traffic jam. Do I get off the exit or do I stay? <laughs> do I get off the exit or do I stay on this exit? Do I get off this exit or do I stay on this exit? Then after a while, it starts poking the bear. You know good and well the quickest way for you to hold the course, but all of a sudden, as you're moving, that exit starts to look so much closer. MTF. <laughs> then all of a sudden, you get stuck behind a double wide, a, a trailer pulling a double wide with wide loads on it on the state route and then get behind five combines. MTF. MTF. Oh, that's right. MTF. Moving too fast, moving too fast, moving too fast. Get quiet. God, should I stay on this highway or should I get off? Stay on the road. Yes, sir. But that, I, think, I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. I think this can work. Is that definite? You have the author of the book living on the inside of you, and you're consulting everything else but him. I believe it's time that we start focusing inside-minded and start at, and turn our focus on our inside to see what God's saying. Amen. So I need to make sure that I'm being led by God. See, there's a lot of stories in the Bible about people that had MTF. And you know, in MTF, it's a syndrome. Man, it's bad. Matter of fact, MTF is one of the reasons why there's the biggest brother war going on ever. Mm -hmm. The biggest sibling rivalry of all time. It's to the point they want to nuke each other because of MTF. Oh, yeah, man. Abraham looked at, Abraham and Sarah had a conversation and said, oh, man, this thing ain't moving too fast, Abraham. What do you think if we had a baby with Hagar? Abraham said, bet. MTF, <laughs> moving too fast. And so, and so because of MTF, Ishmael is born. So all the Muslim, all the, 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 the Muslims and the, and, the, and the Jewish people, they have been battling because of MTF, moving too fast. Amen. I mean, MTF, is, is it powerful or what? Look, I told y'all, it changes generations. It's generational. MTF. So think about all the times that you made decisions where you rushed yourself, and sometimes you look at your kids, and they're doing the same thing. Slow your roll. Amen? So God gave us the Holy Spirit to stop it. And I'm disciplining myself to make sure that I hear from him because hearing from him takes faith and faith is real and faith is patient. And the one thing that you know when you're running out of faith is, is when you start getting, when frustration takes over your expectation. See, when I get excited about things, I love to stay in the state of being excited about life. 
See, a lot of people might be looking at some stuff like, oh, man, storm clouds come. That's all right. We get through the storm. There's something on that other side of that storm. I've been to some places where the storm comes. And after the storm's over, you'd be like, what in the world? F5 hurricane, Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. We're taking off the resort. The next day I woke up was like, you got to be kidding me. Manuel and Jose and them out there cleaning this place up. It's going to be on. <laughs> I mean, the next day. I looked at, remember that, I took that picture outside the window. I was like, oh my God, it's beautiful. A tornado comes by and does something the next day. It's like, it's crystal clear. It's clear on the other side of the storm if we just stay patient and listen to his voice. He's going to get us through. Can I get an amen? amen? We have to remember in all things, we've got to make sure that we, that we trust God. And when we trust God, we stay in faith. For all things work together for good. For all things work together for good. All things work together for good. It's a founding scripture. It's Romans 8, 28. Put that on the screen. It's a founding scripture out on the wall that this ministry has been founded on. All things work together for good. Not some things, all things. All the bad mistakes you made, put all that stuff in the pot. Once God, gets, once God puts his hand in it, we know all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. All things are going to work together for good. I'm going to believe that no matter what I go through, I used to have a friend of mine, they would say, man, that dude can fall in blank and come out smelling like a rose. All things work together for good. I don't get discouraged about the mistakes that I've made in my life. I repent of them and I move forward. You, got, you, you have to keep on moving forward. And we have to understand that the pressure that comes from the outside, I'm not going to let that in. I want to make sure that I'm listening to what the Spirit of God is telling me. Let me have James chapter 3, verse 13. Let me have that in the NLT, please. Yeah, we got real good, real good job here. We'll have a good time. James 3, verse 13, NLT. There we go. If you are wise and understand God's ways, prove it by living an honorable life, doing good works with, with the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you are bitterly jealous... And there is selfish ambition in your heart. Don't cover up the truth with boasting and lying. That's to all the politicians. I said all of them. I ain't say one side. For jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. For such things are earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. Leave that there. When you start feeling like this, you better check yourself. See, I love when people say, I don't have to repent. I never repent. You ever been jealous of anybody? Are you a selfish person? If life's all about you, if everything in your family revolves around you and it's all about yourself, you better check yourself. Amen? Next verse. For whenever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, you will find disorder and evil of every kind. You know what I, one thing I found out in life? Is when I say these words, and I don't say them anymore, I deserve this. Uh-uh. We all deserve hell. If it wasn't for Jesus. When I start saying I deserve something, that's when I'm spending too much time thinking about me. I deserve this. I've been through this. I, 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 I deserve. I pay the pot. You see, you see it's not just point. Then all of a sudden, all your decisions are surrounded by this. And it affects everything else around you negatively. Because we're going to be blessed to be a blessing. Amen? But when you think about only think about yourself all the time, that's about as demonic as it can get. Amen. 
I know, I know. Don't shut me down because I'm preaching good. Next verse. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure, but it's peace loving, gentle at all times, willing to yield to others. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't got proof I'm right. To all you married folk, my wife's always right. No, but, 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 but what I understand is this. Let me, let me, let me, let me do this because I don't want to get in trouble when I get home. <laughs> but, 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 but what I'm saying is that you have to learn to yield to some things. And she has to learn to yield to some things too as well. Amen? And so what happens is that that's wisdom because it's going to be, look, majority of the time the answer's in the middle. Amen? It's not brown. It's not tan. It's, what's that color? Ants? Taupe. So I never knew all these things until I got married. There was usually black or gray, not, I don't know, the color in the middle or whatever. Yeah, whatever they, all them little color things you get and you're doing the house, you got, man, I, it's gray. No, it ain't gray. It's, it's gray. It says it's whatever. <laughs> but wisdom from above is first of all pure, but it's also peace-loving, Peace-loving, gentle at all times, and willing to yield to others. It's full of mercy and full of good deeds. It shows no favoritism, and it's always sincere. Next verse. And those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. So in other words, the Word of God's telling you that there's two options. If you're being led, if you're being led by the devil or you're being led by demonic influence, this is going to give you trouble. But if you're being led by the Spirit of God, it's going to give you peace. So, to, to, to be able to be led by the Spirit, you need to have peace about some things. Have you ever said these words, I don't feel good about this? I don't feel good about this. I, I told the guys yesterday, yes, yesterday in the, in the men's meeting, that Angie and I, we flew, we, we, we flew, in a, we flew in a, into Texas. Remember the big long line at the, at, the, at the car place to pick up the rental car? And so everybody's wondering, what kind of car are you going to get? Oh, get this car, get this car. By the time I got to the line, I was just like, just give me a car, bro. I got a 15-minute drive from the airport to my hotel. 15 minutes. I can make that move in a Yugo. <laughs> well, well, I mean, for those of you I don't know if you young folks know what a Yugo is, I think Pinto. What's the hoopty these days? I don't even know. Young, she's a young, I'm, I don't even, Young kids now are spoiled. They don't have, they, they never, these words never came out their mouths. Vega. <laughs> Shabbat. They don't know. These kids don't know. Ford Escort. See, they don't know. They're, 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 they're clueless about the starter car. Okay, don't let me get off. I'm not getting off on that. But, but so we picked up, so I'm standing in line, and I said, just give me a car. And I'm driving the car, and instead of standing in the line and praying that, Father, in the name of Jesus, give me the right car. Lord, give me a safe car to get me, my wife and I to back and forth on our journey safely. Lord, you have a car for me. I just stood in line and took any car. It's a brand new, like 2021 Hyundai Santa Fe. But I got in the car, driving back to the airport. It felt like the axle was about to break off on the car. So I got one hand right here and got the hand on the bottom just to keep it on the road. It could drive normal if it's driving stuff. If I got up over 55 or 60 mile an hour, man, and so I'm just being cool in the car. <laughs> and my wife is sensing something, right? But I'm almost saying, but don't need something. I'm almost about to break down into a Sunday. <laughs> but I understand that for me, if I go that way on, then all of a sudden it, it, it builds up that, oh, snap, something going on. 
But I'm just holding it. Lord, you get us there. Because every now and then I'll do this. I'm not driving in Springfield. This is Fort Worth, Texas. But I, but so I take the accountability for that because if, if I was not wrapped around hurrying up to get to the hotel, anybody ever been to the airport, ready to get out of the airport, get the car, get to the hotel, get something to eat? I'm going to watch that, get to the hotel, get something to eat, go to bed, spirits, never going to follow me I- anymore. For real, I'm telling you because that can make you, that, amen? Remember, the devil wants to take me out. I'm too loud. He wants to take me out. But I know that God is my protector, but but God's going to teach me. I'm going to learn from that. I could have avoided that. I could have avoided that. Once I got up to that car, something should have scratched me on the inside. Instead of my stomach saying, I want a steak. Instead of my tired body saying, I want a bed, something should have been scratching me on the inside because I know God talking. And that's that's why I'm preaching to you guys about this stuff. Because I should never have stuck a foot inside that car. The God I know is so specific, he would have said, that ain't the one. I wouldn't have to get in it and drive it. He would have told me that in advance. So just like I'm telling you, you need to dial it in, I need to dial it in too. All right, y'all good with that? Was that too loud? Probably, but that's all right. But something but something has to grade on you. Something has to grade on you to start to understand. We have to start to discipline ourselves that we want to be able to follow God. And you know, the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and all their ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. That's Proverbs 3, verse 5 through 6. Put it up on the screen. I can't speak through that. Then I got another, some other scriptures and we get done. Okay? But I want to tell you all about how the master handled when someone tried to rush him. Trust in the Lord all your heart. Let me have this ink, New King James, please. My memory verses is in. Trust in the Lord all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Next verse. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. How do you acknowledge him? Lord. What do we do? Where, where, where do I? Man, those of you, y'all might love Hyundai's. I don't like Hyundai's. I'm not getting one. Not anymore. It scratched me the wrong way. It scratched me real bad. Real. Man, I bought the day I had right arm was like, man, all pumped up. And <laughs> I'm for real. It's nothing like trying to hold a car on the road, folks. Glory to God. But I should have got inward. And, and some of you say, well, 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 Pastor, you made it. That ain't the point. I could have made it without anxiety. Amen. <laughs> it's, it's just like getting on a roller coaster and a seatbelt don't work. <laughs> so we have to learn how to sit down, read our word, be comfortable. And start praying and start listening to God. But then let me tell you about, this is how Jesus handled this. Let me have John 8, verse 2. John 8, verse 2. John 8, verse 2. Now, early in the morning, he came into the temple, and all the people came to him, and he sat down and taught them. Notice, Jesus is teaching He's always teaching all the time. And this is also during the time of the Feast of Tabernacles. And I was doing some, I was doing some study this morning. They, they said that during the Feast of Tabernacles, acts of immorality were, were, were not unusual. So it was usual that people would get into. It's like, it's like a, some men going on conventions, huh? going on business trips and stuff like that. I'll tell you, the reason why I said you, told you that because what's coming next. Then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery when they had set her in the midst. So again, they caught the woman in adultery, but where's the man at? Okay? 
Then they said to him, teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery in the very act. So they like this. This woman was doing it. What are you going to do, Jesus? Remember, pressure. They want an answer. Because if, because if Jesus says stoner, that's against Roman law. But if Jesus says don't stoner, that's against Jewish law. So any of y'all ever heard that thing? I'm in between a rock and a hard place. Come on now. Or D if I do, D if I don't. Where do I go? What do I do? Then you start putting pressure on yourself to make a decision. Now, if you're going to make a decision where the two outcomes are bad, don't you think you need to wait? <laughs> Amen. That would be that would be a time to wait. So now think. Look, okay, okay. Now, now Moses in the law commanded us. That she should be stoned. What do you say? So MTF. They're poking the bear. They're poking the bear. But the bear is the king of kings. The Lord of lords. He's Jesus. He's showing you how to handle this. See, one, see, one thing I found out about life, the more I've seen how Jesus handles stuff, the more I learn how to get through things. And that's one thing I want. See, I don't, though I would like to have a car, though I would like to have a vacation home, but I want to know his ways. If I know his ways, he'll get me to all these other things, right? All right? If he teaches, teach me your ways, Lord. So he shows his ways. You know the little band we wore, WWJD, what would Jesus do? Then they said again, testing him that they might have something which to accuse him. Now, who's the accuser of the brethren? Satan. So, and Satan uses people. So if you think all your friends are going to be all your friends, and some of your good friends will be the ones that keep poking the bear, poking the bear, poking the bear. You going to do something about that yet, man? For real? She done did this to you again, dog. What's up? Tell me, man. Are you about to get, but before I got married, I had all to do, we talking to him. <laughs> How are you going to do up? Why are you putting up with that? Then you break up with her, and he'd be like, hey, what's up, girl? I thought she was all that, all that bad, but why? You? They're testing him, saying that they might have something which accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not what? So in other words, Jesus saying, I ain't studying you guys. I'm not paying any attention to what you're saying. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to sit down here and wait for what? The Father. I'm going to wait for the right answer. Amen? See, remember, so how many of us, I, I remember in that one movie, was that movie Will Smith and his son? <laughs> After Earth or something like that, where they're on that, and, and, and Will Smith is stuck in there in the in the um, in the in the in the rocket ship, and his son has to get something back to him. For what it was. But there's one part where he tells his son, he's like, "Take a knee, take a knee, take a knee," because he because it's military training. Take a knee, get your thoughts together before you do anything else. Take a knee. Before you do anything else, when you're stuck in between that rock and that hard place, before you do anything else, sit your behind down and get quiet. Lord, what do you need me to do? And I'm going to stay quiet until I get the answer. Amen? So, now, so they, they say keep on testing him. But he's like, as though, as though he did not hear. So when they continue asking, they continued asking him. He raised himself up. So in other words, this kept on going on. See, we think this whole thing lasted like one minute. Sometimes as a, as a leader, uh, as a, as a leader of, of people, someone always wants you to answer a question real quick. Pastor, this will work. Let me think about it. 
Well, but he didn't care what I said. No, I said I'm thinking about it. As someone that's responsible for a household, if this looks good, I'm going to think about it. I'm going to wait. Especially at the time I've got right now, I don't have time to be, make any mistakes. I can't miss it right now. I don't want to miss it. Call me Robin Hood. Last week, my name was, what was it? Champ. Now, call me Robin Hood. I'm hitting bullseye. So when they continue asking him, he raised himself up and said to him, now, once he gets the answer, then he stands up and he speaks. He's not being pressured into making the wrong decision. He wants to hear from the Father. So when, you have, so when you're in the middle of a, the time to make a decision, get quiet. Because all the time, some of the friends that you have, even people who love you can steer you the wrong direction. But you know something on the inside that's right. And that's the direction that you need to take. Amen? Not here. What you're feeling in your spirit. So when they continued to ask him, he raised himself up and said, He who is without sin among you, let him throw a, throw a stone at her first. So in other words, he's like, he's the only one that's qualified to throw the stone. He's the only one. But see... What the Spirit of God will do, it will check people to the point where all your haters just get out the way. And once he received God's answer, they left. Next verse. And again, so, so now, so, so look, 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 but what he just did with that was this. So he's writing. He gets up, drops that bomb and goes, mic drop. And he, again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. So he's like, okay, I'm going to let y'all think about this. Yeah, I know I just messed y'all up. For real. Like, and, and he said it casual. See, I'm putting stank on it because I'm a hood rat. Which one of y'all? Yeah, y'all, are you trying to tell me you ain't got no fan? Where your rock at, Flair? What you going to do with that rock, man? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Jerome, I seen you. I see you. I heard about you, bruh. You better, you better drop that stone. And Abraham, you sure enough don't qualify, bruh. <laughs> see, Jesus was, Jesus was a bad dude, man. He wasn't playing. He shakes he shake some stuff up. Next verse. Then those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest even to the last. And Jesus was left alone. So in other words, they just start walking out. Man, shoot, man, I can't throw no rock today. <laughs> I was ready to throw a rock. I can't throw a rock. And Jesus is left. The only one who could do it. Because he's full of mercy and grace and love. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Next verse. When Jesus raised himself up and no one raised himself up and saw no one but the one. Man, so he just stood down there like, could you imagine him? He, he dropped that and all of a sudden everybody, he just sat down like, my, my work is done. Because I'm waiting for one of them who, has to all, who think they're going to stick around. And he all just left. Then he stood up. See, when he's sitting down, see, when, when, when he, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That woman was down on the ground about to be stoned. Jesus got, was down on that ground with her. And I'm quite sure that the whole time he was just like this with her. And he had to be looking at her like, I got you, Miss Chow. I got you. We got this. Man. He raised himself up and saw no one but the woman. He said to her, woman, 
Now, you guys, don't say that to your wife. Woman. <laughs> Woman. <laughs> Where are those accusers of, of yours? Has no one condemned you? Next verse. And he said to her, and she said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, neither do I. Go and sin no more. Jesus tells us how to navigate these kind of things. Because there's a lot of pressure on people right now. Where do we go? The job might be laying off. Where do I go if that happens? What do I do? Get quiet. Take a knee. But not doing the national anthem. I have to get that in there. <laughs> I'm kind of bad like that, Ella. But take a knee. Take a knee. And wait to what he says. Last scripture. Let me have Colossians chapter 3, verse 15, amplify. Then we're done. So I got five more pages left. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. We need to be led by life and peace. That's when you know it. I love it when my wife tells me, I just got peace about this whole situation. That's why I know it's good. Because I have peace too. You know? She said, honey, you're looking really sweet today. I said, I got peace about that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I speak in terms of human relations. No, I need Colossians. I'm about to preach that too. You're about to give me some <laughs> Colossians. That's all right. I, I, people, people got meatloaf that they waiting on. <laughs> well, how come I didn't sit through those long sermons? God, God you, be, you get to heaven and be like, you never like to sit through long, hit the, hit, hear the word of God very long. Well, why? Oh, I like meatloaf. <laughs> <laughs> Let the peace of Christ the inner calm of the one who walks daily with him be the controlling factor in your heart, deciding and settling questions that arise. To this peace indeed you were called as members in one body of believers and be thankful. Let that, let that peace of God resonate in you and be thankful. Let the peace resonate in you and be thankful. Father, we thank you for your word. And I know there's those out there that may be in here or watching, watching on TV, but today is the hour of salvation. I said earlier that this is not the time to be messing around with the things of faith. The word of God clearly states that if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, the word Jesus, confess Jesus, you'll be saved. It's that simple. I believe in my heart, I confess in my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life. God's calling you back into his kingdom. He does not want to come back here and leave you here. Today's the day where you make the decision to be cleansed in the blood of the Lamb by accepting Jesus. His arms are open wide for you right now. And I, like I said, if you believe in the heart and confess your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and repent of your sin and shame, he'll wash you in his blood and heaven's yours. Heaven's yours. So wherever you are, it's that simple. May God bless you and keep you in all that you do. Consider yourselves dismissed.